Welcome back to the Babbling Meek. Hixie contrasted a series of comments from Adobe executives, including CEO Shantanu Naririan, who wrote in 2009, he said, to the extent that an improved HTML standard accelerates innovation and consistent reach for web content, we are very supportive. So in other words, that means we're supportive of HTML5. At least he was during the time of him saying this. Now, earlier this month, it says, Adobe CTO Kevin Lynch said that Adobe supports HTML and its evolution. It does, huh? Then why are you, why are you filing objections against the four, against specifications? Now, despite, despite all these supportive public comments, Adobe is now working to block the HTML, HTML5 specification, particularly in the realm of the canvas element. While HTML5 is often contrasted with Flash as a means for supporting video playback, see, the new HTML5 canvas elements presents a direct threat to Flash as a way to add animation or navigation elements to a web page. The HTML5 canvas element also supports the creation of web games, advertisements, and other interactive content, a feature set that will make its adoption a direct threat to Adobe's Flash platform. So HTML5 offers us, it offers us every single thing that Flash does, only it's not a damn plug uh, Okay, I'm going to go over a little comment here. There you go. If web games are available on HTML5 same as Flash, then your idea about blocking Flash so people will have to buy the app is bullshit. If HTML5 has games and Apple supports it, then it's not about apps. It's about games being bought and sold. That's not 100% true. Here's where Emeek starts to talk out his ass about HTML5. What he doesn't point out is that HTML5 is not necessarily this whole revolution uh, they talk about. Yes, there's all these things. There's a, basically one of the big improvements in HTML5 is we're, we're doing tags. There's going to be a video tag, a music tag. Uh, it's not, basically, new elements are being added to HTML that, you know, they're all things we do, but we have to define through scripts and other things. And, like, if you want to play a video right now, it's the way you do it through some type of player. You know, the, the more predominant ones are Flash-based, but there's others players. You know, there's H.264, there's... Oh, crap, I can't remember what the other one is. Say, so .move's technically different. It's, I guess you, there's the other QuickTime ones, but that would be lumped in with H.264, because that's Apple's standard. Oh, oh, yeah, there's the real-time streaming protocols that are primarily used on uh, mobile applications and for uh, things being compatible with mobile phones since Flash being adopted to mobile is being a little slow. But all of these things are done via proprietary code and proprietary players and on your browser you need a plugin. It's like you need a Flash plugin to play Flash. You need the H.264 codex loaded on your system to play an H.264 codex streaming video. You need some version of something that can interpret QuickTime videos to play QuickTime videos. It's like, you, you, your computer needs to have the plugin to be compatible. This is still a problem with HTML5 because we have the video tag. There is no standard for the video. We have, you know, the other tags and so on and so forth. All of these new tags, and this is why HTML5 hasn't been ratified yet and why it's taking so long, is there's this little war going on for who's going to be the new standard for the internet. And everybody's fighting for it. Apple's fighting for it. Google's fighting for it. Adobe's fighting for it. Microsoft is fighting for it. Because whoever gets ratified as that standard is going to be you know, set to be hooked, the claw through which the internet must go for years to come. So it's, that's why they're all fighting over that. Um, 
And once there's an agreed upon standard, all the browsers, because like, Firefox supports HTML5. However, Firefox does not support all HTML5. They play some of the HTML5 video standards, particularly the Google one, as does Chrome. Uh, which I want to say is OS 3D or something. I, I'll get into that later. Um, and but and Safari's HTML5, but Safari doesn't play the Google um, video standard. They only play the H.264 HTML5 video standard, and so on and so on and so forth. If HTML5 was ratified in its current incarnation, would, and you have to do this now anyways in HTML4. Uh, you have to write your HTML code a little tiny bit different for IE, for Mozilla, for Safari, because they interpret things a little differently. Each of them make their own assumptions about what code is inherently understood to be there and which code is meant to be literally interpreted and so on and so forth. Where that creates a problem now is when you're using frames, tables, and alignment. Um, if you want something to auto-center, there's three extra lines of code you need to add because IE looks for one, Mozilla looks for another, Safari tends to interpret things the same way as Mozilla, but not always. Uh, it's basically, you wind up with three lines that are all redundant code to do the same thing. Uh, it makes, a, it, in some places, you wind up doing re overly redundant stuff. You'll, you'll put in an empty cell, and you'll put in a non-breaker space and a return line, because some browsers want to see the space to know that cell should be there to space things out. The other ones will only put the hash mark if the return, and you have to put all this self-contained in a separate frame cell or div, otherwise the browsers start shifting things all over the place and doing things. Right now, that's what almost every one of these new tags for HTML5 is like, because everyone's fighting to be the standard by which this is done on, you would have to write an if-else little logic test for every single browser. It would be if browser X, execute format Y, if browser Y, execute format y, yada 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 and so forth. Not that this can't be done. It's a lot of extra work for web developers that really shouldn't be. And these little if and logic tests tend to create false positives because the browsers continue to update and continue to change and you write your test for how it is today and that test may not work tomorrow. As evident by the fact that uh, anyone who's ever gone to their bank's website who gets this little oom error that goes, I'm sorry but our system only supports IE 6 or greater, or Firefox 2.5 or greater, and you're running one of these browsers, or, and there's really no reason if it supports those, it shouldn't work with Safari. It's basically even the teeny tiniest error in these if-else statements breaks the entire website. And it could be something as simple as one of the browsers updated and they haven't had a chance to go change their if-logic test yet. The internet can't function being continually broken like this. So it's like, I'm all for HTML5, but the standards need to be finished ratifying. And I'm sorry, none of the four companies I named are going to let this go without a fight. I'm coming up on time. We'll continue to dive into this into the uh, next section. Peace out, temporary.